Hi, we're out here at the front stretch with a car that revolutionized modified racing back in 1980. This is the famous Batmobile, the infamous 112. Gary Ballou is the man who drove this thing to Victory Lane. I've heard all the stories about this car, Gary. What was it exactly that, that what was the idea behind this at the time? You know, Kenny came to me, he was with me in New Smyrna World Series of, of Stock Car Racing in February. And he said, Gary, I want to build you a hot rod that you can drive 85% and lap the field. I said, wow. Yeah, yeah right, I'm right. In. And I'm in. <laughs> and I broke my neck that night racing late model cars. Oh, no. And he came to the hospital and we had appropriated money from my friends and people and, and got a direction on doing it. And we said, we're going to do it. He came to the hospital with a briefcase. He said, Gary, you broke your neck. I don't know if we we're ever going to be able to do this. I said, you know what, Kenny? We're going to do it, buddy. Just keep working. We're going to do it. We'll put Bobby Allison in it, put Wolfgang in it, or Bobby Allen. We'll, we'll put, oh, yeah, Bobby Allen. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's so many good races that we could have put in the car and done the same thing I did. But he said, I, I, didn't, I, I didn't build a car for all them people. I built a few. I said, I'm coming huh. back. I'm coming back. I'm going to race. It's okay. So we started in February to build this car. The car was built by the rules. All the crybabies cried because they wanted to go and watch TV at night. We didn't. We, we worked and we busted our ass. And he built something that was light years ahead of everybody else. What was the reaction when this thing, because I know you guys did a good job of keeping hidden it for a while. What was the reaction when you we first brought that thing out? We really didn't hide it. We had to. We didn't show it off either. <laughs> we had an inspector fly out to Independence, Missouri with Kenny and measure it and look at it and measure it and look at it according to their rule book. And it was legal. Okay, so now we're going to go race it. We never tested it. We went to Syracuse. I run about six or seven laps. It was pretty quick. They said, that's it. You get no more practice. <laughs> Jacked in. Put on the cover on it. Mm -hmm. So that was it. So I got six or seven practice laps, and I qualified with it, and I raced it, and that was it. I never got to drive it again. How does it make you feel knowing that you drove the car, and you were, in a lot of people's minds, the man that drove the car that changed the whole thing? I was blessed to get to drive this hot rod for Kenny Weld, Don Brown, and, and Ron Hutter, and all the people that were on, Mario Rossi and Eddie Labertone, and just Pete Hamilton, my driving coach. And there were so many good people involved in this situation that it was incredible that they had the belief to let me drive it. So I, I just felt like that I was blessed the one to get to drive it, you know what I mean? And people tried to buy it. And, a friend of mine, Earp, tried to buy it for a bunch of money and put, and put Larry Moore in it. Larry Moore would have lapped the field three times, <laughs> you know, but it wasn't, it wasn't what we were there for. Right. And it wasn't, I wasn't there to beat the card I won three times okay. right there. Oh, that was the car. Or, or to beat Tony. Mm -hmm. I was there to win the race mm -hmm. and to drive something that was that much better. And it was far superior. So, I mean, and it was legal. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, and that's the biggest thing people didn't know because a lot of people I heard the stories were coming up going man this thing ain't legal and yes, it was it was totally legal by the rules totally legal by the rules the inspector flew out there and spent two or three days measuring everything on it you know just he worked harder and there was a lot smarter people and he was a uh, Kenny Well was a bubble from being a genius I noticed you had tears in your eyes when I came up to first start talking to you. This is emotional for you to drive this thing around tonight, isn't no, it? It's not so much this. It's Uncle Tony just passed away this year, oh, and that was right. one of my very best friends. And and now I've gotten to the age of where I was a younger kid driving for everybody. And it's been a rough year, been a rough couple of years of yeah, most of them people passing. And it's just, it's hard. It's hard. I, hope. I feel like I've won a ton of races here in that car. Maybe I feel like I should be in that car, and we didn't build this car to beat that car. We built this car to beat everybody. And, and you did, man. And we did, but I got Anthony. I got I got his oldest son, which is my little brother, yeah. driving that thing tonight. Well, I wish you all the best. I know it's going to be tough driving around the track with tears in your eyes. It's good to see you again, though. It's good, man, and we're, just, we're glad to be here, and we're glad to be here. Chris Larson made all this happen for all of us, this racetrack, this whole deal, everything tonight. God bless Chris because it's it's a hundred year old racetrack. We need to no. keep this place alive somehow, and to be able to to, to take his cars, these are all his cars. Oh, that's right. And what he does for me and gives me an opportunity to do is incredible. I wish you all the best. It's good to see you, Gary. Thank you, man.
Gary Ballou, the infamous Batmobile that changed everything back in 1980.